Well, we've been talking about it all week long, and it happened last night. It was a must-see Fox News interview. Brett Baer pressing the vice president on everything from the economy to the border, a lot on the border, during her first formal sit-down as vice president with Fox News. And with less than three weeks to go until Election Day, the Democratic nominee refusing to take respons responsibility for migrant crime under her administration. Jocelyn Nungary. Rachel Morin, Lakin Riley, they are young women who were brutally assaulted and killed by some of the men who were released at the beginning of the administration. No, Do you no, no, owe Brett, those families really, an it, apology? Let me just say, first of all, those are tragic cases. There's no question about that. There's no question about that. And I can't imagine the pain that the families of those victims have experienced for a loss that should not have occurred. So that is true. It is also true that if a board of security had actually been passed nine months ago, it would be nine months that we would have had more border agents at the border, more support for the folks who are working around the clock trying to hold it all together. Madam Vice President. To ensure that no future harm would occur. And this election in 20 days will determine whether we have a president of the United States who actually cares more about fixing a problem, even if it is not to their political advantage in an election, because there was a solution, Brett. So the mother of Rachel Moore joined us earlier on Fox and Friends with an emotional reaction to the Harris interview. Watch. And I've talked to people that have lost children, and they said the pain never goes away, that I'm going to walk with it the rest of my life. That's an unbearable thing. I want to feel happy again, and I don't know how to do that. It's like, this should not be. And if they had secured the borders, and just American people should come first. That's why we elect these officials, to protect our country, not to open the border. And we, we brought her on today because Kamala Harris was asked a couple of times whether or not she owed the families an apology. And she said she did not apologize, per se, but she said they're tragic cases. And she said, I cannot imagine the pain the families are experiencing. So we just asked Patty Morin, tell her about the pain. And that's what she was talking about. Patty Morin, whose daughter, Rachel, 37 years old, when she was murdered by a migrant in the country illegally, said the pain never goes away. Yeah, let's bring in Senator J.D. Vance from the great state of Ohio, also a vice presidential candidate with Donald Trump. Good morning to you. Good morning, guys. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. We're doing well. Uh, you heard that interview. It's just gut-wrenching to know that was preventable. And it happened uh, after they did away with the wall, after they decided to end Remain in Mexico. What's your reaction? Well, first of all, of course, our, our heart goes out to Patty Moore and all the people who have lost their lives because of illegal immigrant crime. But we don't just need sympathies for, for these victims. We need to change the policy so that it doesn't happen to the next American family or the next innocent American girl. And what I heard from Kamala Harris last night was, was look, th th this is not th these girls, you know, J Jocelyn Nungry and Lakin Riley and, of course, um, Patty's daughter, are, are not dead because of some accident or some force of nature. They're dead because Kamala Harris opened the border and let their killers into our country to go after their daughters. Uh, they don't just need our sympathy. They don't just need our kind words, though they certainly deserve that. They need leadership who actually puts the security of this country first. And unfortunately, they're just not getting that from Kamala Harris. You know, guys, the, the thing that I found just so bizarre about Kamala Harris's entire interview, 25 minutes of a person who couldn't answer a direct question. How many illegal immigrants have come in? She didn't answer that question. What are we turning the page on? She goes and talks about Donald Trump, who, of course, hasn't been in office for the past three and a half years. Kamala Harris has been. What I saw as a person who, who not just didn't have the skill to navigate a tough interview, but doesn't know how to explain her record, because her record is not possible to yeah. explain away to the American people. And so she dipped and dodged questions for 25 minutes. That, that's not leadership, and that's not contrition. And I think the American people would like to see from their vice president 
an acknowledgement that she screwed up. It's why we have so many of these problems. Real leadership would be promising a new course and acknowledging so, while the old course didn't work. So, Senator, if, if we could just stay on immigration a little bit, because one thing I noticed in, in that interview is that there's, a, I guess, a fundamental misunderstanding between changing the laws when it comes to immigration reform and border security. And it seems like it's, they feel like it's one of the other. So I guess my question is, how do you guys highlight that on the campaign trail? Because you, you saw in the interview with Brett Baer, she continued to say, well, we proposed the bill. But of course, that bill had no border security measures there. Yeah, that's exactly right. So first of all, you go back to the original days of the Biden-Harris administration and 94 executive orders when Kamala Harris became border czar that had the intended purpose and had the effect of opening the American southern border. That's ending Donald Trump's remain in Mexico policy. That's stopping construction of the border wall. That's a whole host of things that basically threw open the floodgates. Now, they want to pull this bait and switch where they say, yes, we opened the border for three years, but if Congress had bailed us out three years later, Later, that somehow was going to make the original three years of our open border better. And the problem even there is that the congressional law, I, I was there when that, that border bill was being negotiated, it wouldn't have secured the border. It would have allowed two million people to come into our country illegally every single day, and it would have permanently implemented this mm -hmm. catch and release policy that the Kamala Harris administration put in place. If you have catch and release, where basically you have an illegal immigrant come in and we let them float around in our country for 10 or 15 years where they're waiting for a court date, you're never going to have real border security. So I would like her to just acknowledge they came in saying they were going to open the border. They came in saying they were going to undo Donald Trump's border policy. They did that. The predictable consequences ensued. Admit it. Admit that right. you guys screwed up and changed course. Don't blame it on Congress because you guys refuse to do your job. Mm. Senator, we were joking earlier that if somebody was playing a drinking game where every time she said the, the name Donald Trump, 10 minutes in, you would be completely toasted because every time he asked a question about her or the Biden administration, she talked about Donald Trump. Um, one of, the, one of the things she had to do last night was she had to clean up the mess she made last week on The View and then on the Stephen Colbert show, where when asked, so what would you do differently uh, in a Kamala Harris administration? And she goes, mm, then nothing comes to mind. Brett wanted to make sure that she actually felt that way, or did she have a different answer? Well, as it turns out, she has a different answer. Listen to this. Your campaign slogan is a new way forward, and it's time to turn the page. You've been vice president for three and a half years. So what are you turning the page from? Well, first of all, turning the page from the last decade in which we have been burdened with the kind of rhetoric coming from Donald Trump that has been designed and implemented to divide our country and have Americans literally point fingers at each other. Madam that Vice is President, more than 70 percent of people That is tell about pollsters. turning the page on rhetoric that people are frankly exhausted of, Brett. You've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person <laughs> holding on, the office. Come on. Yeah, come on. I, I heard two or three uh, times for a drink uh, during that one particular answer. <laughs> so what she did is essentially, because Joe Biden is deeply unpopular right now, Senator, is she declared her independence from, her, from him and said her administration would not be a continuation of Joe Biden's presidency. Do you believe that? No, not at all, Steve. I mean, look, the, the entire theme of her campaign is that she hasn't even met the person that's the president, even though she's his sitting vice president and ran along the ticket with him. She is, of course, the deciding vote and trillions of dollars of Joe Biden's spending. She bragged about being the last person in the room when major decisions were made. But we have to sort of step back and appreciate there is something pathological going on here. She has been in power for three and a half years. And when asked about how she would be different, she goes and talks about Donald Trump. 
And when right. pointed, you know, when it's pointed out, well, you've actually been in office for three and a half years. She says, well, you know, he, he's been talking about politics for 10 years. What is it in the mind of this person that can't just acknowledge that she has been in power for three and a half years and bears some responsibility as the sitting vice president for the condition that the country is in? Now, she could do any number of things. She could actually say, well, I, I think that things are a little bit better than you're giving me credit for. Or she could say, well, this wasn't totally my fault. In Instead, she pretends that Donald Trump bears the responsibility for problems that happened while she was the sitting right. vice president. She does that about the border. She does that about the affordability of groceries. She does that about the chaos on the world stage. I've never seen a person who's running for president as the sitting vice president who pretends that she has nothing to do with the condition of the country she's been governing. Mm. Well, we saw Elon Musk. Uh, Musk supporting Donald Trump when he was in Butler and he's campaigning for him in Pennsylvania. I know you just spoke to voters in that battleground in that very important state. What what issues are you hearing that matter most? You know, I, I'm hearing consistently concerns about the border. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of concerns about American manufacturing. And in Pennsylvania, particular American energy, think about this, the, the, the most important part of manufacturing in this country is having low energy costs. Pennsylvania workers are saying, we've got the best energy in the entire world. Kamala Harris won't let us get it out of the ground. And that's why we're supporting Donald Trump is because he's the president who will. And then, of course, finally, you're hearing a lot of concerns just about the cost of groceries. You know, small business yeah. owners who can't afford to get by, moms and dads who, who can't afford to buy the things that they need for their kids at the grocery store. So we're going to be back actually in, in Pennsylvania later today. Yeah. I love the state of Pennsylvania, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And uh, look, I think we're in a good, good spot to so win it because people are so fed up with more of the same under Kamala Harris. So, Senator, you see it in the swing states. You see it in Pennsylvania. I I've been going all across the country, going into barbershops, and you guys are breaking up that coalition uh, even with black males. But the question is, how do you get those people? We know they're frustrated. We know they're willing to give you guys a shot, but you got to get them to the polls. So how do you get right. all of these voters? Are you guys encouraging them to start voting now? It's early voting is happening. How do you get them there? Yeah, gr great question and great point. Look, I I'm not one of these guys who loves election season, but as Donald Trump says, it is what it is. And if the Democrats are going to use early voting, mail-in voting, Republicans, we've got to do the exact same thing. We've got to take advantage of the opportunities that are out there for us to vote. And whether you're Democrat, Republican, or independent supporter of Donald Trump, use absentee voting, use mail-in voting, use early voting, and it's already getting kicked off the ground in Pennsylvania. And if you look at our numbers, they're, they're actually quite good. And you, know, you asked, how do you get some of those folks to the polls? I think that we just got to hammer the message over the next 18 days, the only way to change the direction direction of this country is is to actually get out there and vote for Donald Trump. Right. And and on the ground with our campaign, we're spending a lot of time knocking on doors, calling people, going and visiting people and just saying, get out there, vote whenever you can, because the country depends on it. And you know what, Senator, if you don't vote, you can't complain. So that should motivate a lot That's of people. That's what my grandmother always said, Steve. Your grandmother was smart. All right. By the way, uh, we did. Thank, thank you, you very much, thank you. Senator, for joining us today. Uh, we did reach out to the uh, Harris campaign to come on, but you know what? Haven't heard back. And you know what? We're not going to hold our breath. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.